Well, hi again, everybody. My name is Matt Kleskowski, and uh, we're gonna take a look at a really fun little way to use the brush to add some light to your photos. And works inside of Lightroom, works inside of Adobe Camera Raw, the same exact way. It kinda works inside of On One. I'll show that one to you at the end, but it's a really kind of a fun, creative way to, uh, to use the brush in your photos. I will give this warning up front. If you're the kind of person that gets bothered by creative, fun stuff to, to do things to your photography, and, uh, and you're gonna eventually go and leave a comment that says, you know, we have ruined photography through the use of Photoshop and all that stuff, I would highly suggest you stop watching right now because we don't want you to be aggravated. But for the rest of you, if you like this kind of stuff, I think you're gonna enjoy this one and you'll probably even learn a little trick along the way. So I'm gonna run through the uh, the examples in, in a few different places just to show you it works exactly the same between Photoshop and Lightroom. But we'll start in Lightroom. We are gonna go and grab the adjustment brush. And so uh, I'm gonna hit the left bracket key. I'm gonna make the brush smaller, all right? And, uh, and then we're gonna come over here to exposure and we can change this later. I'm gonna make it pretty, I'm gonna make it overbearingly obvious right now, but just knowing that we're gonna tone it down in a minute. So we're gonna crank up our exposure a little bit. We have a small brush. Now there is actually a Lightroom tip video. It's actually, it's probably one of my most popular videos ever. Um, I, I, I never saw so many comments from people that, that loved all these tips. So I'll make sure you know it's in, in an overlay here on the video or it's linked in the description. But I, I kind of showed how you can go and you can click in one place and shift click in another place. And what that'll do is that'll draw a straight line between the two. So if I click and then I shift click, it draws a straight line in, in between wherever I click the first place and the second place. Now, in this example, if I were to go here and click and then come down here and click, that doesn't do much for us. But if I were to go up there and click with a small brush, then hit the right bracket key and make my brush a lot larger and then come down here and shift click between so it draws that line, watch what happens. See how it, it kind of changes the size of the brush as it goes from here to here. So the, the, the rays of light kind of emanate a little bit more. All right, so again, I'll try it again. I'll go over into this area here, hit the left bracket key, make my brush nice and small. Hit the right bracket key down here, make my brush nice and big. By the way, you're probably gonna wanna use a, you're probably gonna wanna use a fairly large feather for this as well, okay? I keep that feather up to 100%. So you're just gonna shift click down there and you get, <clears throat> You get a nice little ray of light as it goes through. And then what we can do to keep things kind of neat and tidy is we make it small again, and we kind of go click right near that original point, And then we hit the right bracket key, make it big, shift click, and we make another one, okay? Rather than come up here and click new each time, don't make a new adjustment brush. Um, just keep it under the same one. Again, just go over here, click, right bracket key, Come down here, shift click, bigger. What that does for us is now we can click on that little adjustment pin and we can move this around as one unit, all right? It's, a, it's not three separate adjustment brush pins on here. We can kind of change it, drag it around. We can also come over here and obviously pull down the exposure. We can add some warmth to the light if it looks a little bit too white in some cases. And then the other nice part about it is that we can go into erase mode right down here. I can make my brush, I probably wouldn't use that's quite as big of a brush, but I'd use a larger brush and now I can kind of fade it because those rays of light would not kind of, they would not, they would not be so perfectly um, aligned with each other as I went down there. So I can erase from some of the edges of that so it looks a little bit more realistic. Again, I said it in the beginning, this is a fun technique. This is one of those creative fun things that you do. Um, it's for people that, that like to push it and have a little bit of fun with their photos. So we'll go over here and again, we can move that around, change all your settings. The other thing I might do whenever I do a technique like this is go to the radio filter, increase the exposure and kind of drag one kind of right around the window, just to kind of hide your tracks of the fact that you've kind of put some little areas in there. Again, you could always use the uh, the brush tool and erase it from there as well if it started to get too overbearing, okay? 
All right, so that is an example inside of Lightroom. Just to show you, I will go into Photoshop uh, with another example. We will head over to the filter menu, go to the camera raw filter, and if you were to open up a raw file in Photoshop, it'll automatically open up inside a camera raw. In this case, I'm opening up a, a JPEG photo that was already open in Photoshop. So if I wanna go to camera raw, I just have to manually go there through the filter menu. Same concept, you come up here, you see that there's a brush tool Go over here to the right hand side and I would increase that a little bit there. Hit the left bracket key, click once and then hit the right bracket key, make it really, really big. Click down here, bam, get a big ray of light. Again, you, you don't see it kind of emanate quite as much because it's, it's a low opacity. You don't want it to look like that, but um, you can see as it gets bigger. So it works exactly the same as it did inside a Lightroom. Now I'm gonna show you one, two more things. Um, let's go to a different example here. And then also this would be a great chance to remind you guys that if you like these videos, I would greatly appreciate it if, uh, if you would just subscribe or follow. So on whatever platform you happen to be watching these videos, if it's uh, on YouTube, there's of course a, a little subscribe area and you can also turn on notifications, which is important because that way you'll get notified. I only do a, one or two videos a week. Same thing on Facebook, you can like the page, but you can also turn on notifications. So if you do like these, I would greatly appreciate it, and that way you won't miss any of the ones that I do. All right, back over here inside of Photoshop, same thing, we come up here to the camera raw filter and just take our brush, left bracket key. And so in a case like this, it kind of becomes you know, a lot of people ask, you know, where do I put it? You know, it's it's kind of a guess. You know, I've just kind of put it kind of in the middle, I would say, of the window here. Again, right click or right bracket key to make that really big. And then you can go down there. And don't forget, you're going to want to go in and erase it from certain areas. And just like inside of Lightroom, where I kept it on the same adjustment brush pin, I can do the same thing here inside of Photoshop. Again, shift click to get it there. Now I can move this around as one entity, all right? I don't have multiple little pins that I can move around or that I'd have to move around to separate this. Lastly, I had said for all of the on one users out there that you can kind of do this in there. So you would open up your photo into develop, uh, just click on edit over there, go over to local, and we would use our brush tool. Let's go ahead and click add adjustment, left bracket key, make the brush smaller and click. Make sure you increase exposure, right bracket key, make the brush larger, and then you're gonna shift click. I could even shift click off the image there. The only trick inside on one, and, and you're not gonna always see it, so that's why I, it's one of those things, it depends, on, it depends on how much space is between the brush and whatnot. One thing you will see is it leaves gaps, and if you do a big one, let me, let's, let's go over here, and I'm gonna click, and I'm gonna come down here and then I will shift click and you should see it. See how it kind of leaves, it's, it's almost like it spreads itself out. So you're not always gonna see it. It depends, it depends on the circumstances. Um, you know, you could go in there and kind of use your brush to maybe try to finesse and fade that if it is a problem, but it's not always a problem when I do it inside on one. It's just be aware that it will leave some gaps in between there depending on how large or small your brush is. All right, folks, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I will talk to you again real soon.